Well, here's an ultra rare one for the aficionado, a 1973 Oldsmobile Cutlass Salon. Oldsmobile in 1973 had the Cutlass S, which was the base model. They had the Supreme and they had the Salon, which is definitely a very unique car. And it was supposed to be in the European tradition of automobiles, as Oldsmobile would say. Notice it's got the body colored wheel covers, which came with the Cutlass Salon. These cars also came with a very unique interior, overstuffed, we'll call it corduroy style velour upholstery. And Olds advertised this as a vehicle that was really made for four people because it had a center console in the front. And I think they were trying to get it uh, into the spirit of the two plus two style vehicles that many European companies were offering at the time. And further to that point, Car and Driver in its August 1973 issue tested one of these Cutlass Salons versus a Mercedes 450 SE and found the Olds actually outhandled it on the skid pad. But obviously the Mercedes with its independent rear suspension could handle taking corners with bumps better than this particular Cutlass given its live axle suspension. You can see here, as I just pointed to, the grille dips below the bumper. This styling was all new for 1973 and the Cutlass Salon had a unique front piece different from the Cutlass S and quite handsome. Olds had this twin port theme, interestingly. Pontiac had a twin port grill starting with the 1959 model year, but somewhere along the way, Olds also kind of picked it up and had it become a trademark styling theme for them. Overall, this car really helped the Cutlass brand uh, become the number one best-selling car of the 70s. You can see here the cushy velour interior seats and center console. These were individually reclining as well, which was rare for the time. Most American cars just had fixed back seats. The dash is kind of pedestrian. Olds said that it was similar to European sports cars. The back seat doesn't have a center armrest, but it does have the similar corduroy fabric on it. And this was also what GM called a colonnade car which means that pillar in the middle resembles an architectural colonnade style. These came out, as I said, in 1973, and General Motors was really pushing this colonnade styling in anticipation of future rollover standards, where they thought that hard tops weren't going to be able to meet that, nor were convertibles, hence the quote-unquote last convertible, the 1976 Eldorado. Here you can see this international series of flags under the Oldsmobile logo that the salon bore, and that later became a trademark of the International Series vehicles that Oldsmobile offered for a number of years. This was the early adoption of those flags underneath the nameplate. Overall, quite a handsome vehicle. I love the skeg line behind the front wheel as well as in front of the rear wheel that became kind of an old trademark for some time. The Cutlass Salon came standard with a 350 cubic inch engine, four barrel carburetor. So actually you got a four barrel, uh, which was true even of the Cutlass S. So Olds was thinking a little bit about performance and you could get an optional 455 cubic inch four barrel engine, neither of which was overly powerful. I believe the four barrel made 180 horsepower on the 350. The 455 was around 225 horsepower. So not huge, but I do own one of these with the uh, cutlasses, and I can say the 354 barrel is actually quite pleasant. Notice here it's got a dimmer switch I just pointed to on the steering column stock, which was unique to the salon in this year, and an early feature moving it from the floorboard to the steering column stock, one of the first American-made vehicles to do that. Hope you enjoyed the video on this Olds Cutlass Salon. Let's take a look at a dealer training guide from 1973 about the vehicle.
Salon Comfort makes you want to relax. The rocket engine makes you want to get up and go. And the suspension lets you do both. This is an automobile for the man who wants a driving experience in the tradition of the finest European road cars, but at a fraction of the price. This is Cutlass 1973. Each car with a special character of its own. Each with its own distinctive profile. Each with its own window treatment. Each with a name you'll be proud to drive. Cutlass from Oldsmobile. Well, and there you have it. In 1973, this was really the beginning of the Cutlass franchise taking off for Oldsmobile. Sold about 380,000 units in 1973, but by the late 70s, it was selling well over half a million units and had become America's number one best-selling vehicle. And its popularity remained all the way through the late 1980s when Olds finally canceled the car after the 1988 model year. But having owned one of these and driven them, I will say that it's not just marketing that caused the Cutlass to sell well. It was really a beautiful combination of extremely smooth engines and transmissions that were highly reliable, the Olds Rocket V8s, and also couple that with a suspension system that was almost the perfect balance between ride and handling. The ride was not too stiff, nor was it too soft, nor did the car lean in turns. Actually, corners really flat. Even the base S models of this era are great handlers, and the ride is not offensive. I think another thing that endeared the vehicle to its customers was the overall comfort on the inside. Even the bench seats in these Oldsmobiles have six inches of foam cushioning, and they really offer a sublime place to sit on long trips. Again, even if you just had the bench seat, not the Cutlass Salon bucket seats, as you saw in the previous videos. So there were many reasons behind the Cutlass's eventual success. Those are a few, and of the Cutlasses, the Cutlass Salon was definitely the one to get if you were trying to get something that was cheaper than an import, but handled like an import. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care. Thanks again for watching this video on the 1973 Olds Cutlass Salon. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as that will help the YouTube algorithm serve it up to more viewers like you. And that helps me and that helps you because it'll make me make more videos. Until next time, be sure to check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care.